And guess who's just joined us? Del. <laughs> so we're just being joined by Del, and Del's obviously very, very late. And now I wanted to, I'm, I'm thinking of a theme today, and I thought bridges, Roman bridges. And lots of, lots, you know, the, the Romans were known for their, engineering and architecture we, we can't we can't doubt that and obviously the temple behind me would be would be one of the one of many temples that the romans would have built across their roman empire but you know when you think about it temples greece um you, you got the the babylonians you, you got all, all civilizations like building temples so we got to think of something that is a little bit more unique when we think about the Romans. And actually, when we think about the Romans, we think that they 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 may have been good at building lots of structures, and and they were really good with their with their cement. And but one thing that they that they must stand out alone with is their bridges, the bridges over the River Tiber in in Rome itself. So we got you know a couple of them still there. And it's, it's that thing about Roman Britain, Roman bridges in, in Britain. Where were they? Were there Roman bridges in Britain? And if if there were Roman bridges um, in, in Britain, are there any surviving? The answer is no, no, and no. So, But we do actually have some really nice structural remains that, that are sometimes very awkward to interpret at this site um pierce bridge now there was an archaeologist a few years ago that i used to have a little bit of contact with in the 1990s and he was a guy by the name of um Selleck and same name as the the editor of current archaeology but a different guy and he was ob absolutely obsessed with finding a roman bridge in britain you know a proper stone Roman bridge in Britain. Did they did they actually have all stone bridges, um, stone bridges in Britain? And the answer is that probably maybe, and and that's what he went out looking for. He's no longer with us, but one of the areas that he was interested in was this locality. Now I do know that time, it was a time team associated episode, um, that they that they were diving in and around the the Pierce Bridge area, and they found. I think one or two piers associated, and maybe one or two timbers associated with the Pierce Bridge at the location of Pierce Bridge, which we could actually look at. Now, th this this is one of those those great things. Now, there are lots of case places in Britain that have have got the tag Roman Bridge associated with them. And if anyone's ever seen this image, this is a nice coloured up image. Um, this this would probably be from about the 1920s or 1930s. And if anyone's actually spoiled this, they, they will see at the bottom that this is the Roman bridge at Better Sicoi, but it's not Roman, but it's called the Roman bridge. So in many ways, when you do see the word Roman bridge or Roman this and Roman that, it was a very fashionable thing to give the name Roman to lots of structures that we, we've got questions about across Britain. And in in many ways, the, the, the there's lots of the Roman steps, for example, you know, and, and you find all these different things. But this is not a Roman bridge at Betis of Coy, but it could well be um, with the San Helen, but it's not of Roman construction per se. Now, obviously, this image that's behind me, this this was the big red herring. Why have I got a Roman temple behind me? Because there's snow and it's in Africa and it's a Roman temple. Lovely. And one one thing that we can say is that if you wanted to write a book about the Roman world, you would certainly see a survivor of every single type of their architecture that they created. So if you go to Rome, you've got the Parthenon, um, um, not the Parthenon, the Pantheon. Sorry, I get the two mixed up. The Pantheon in Rome, which which is a which is a temple structure, and it's got a beautiful um, sort of concrete dome, and that's still standing. You've got examples of Roman temples, Roman aqueducts, uh, uh, Pont de Garde, 
you, you've got Roman bridges that we'll, we'll have a look at. You've got Roman basilicas still standing. You've got Roman columns, but they're usually Roman baths, for example, Nimi in, 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 um, in France. If, if you put all these together, you could probably come up with one function in Roman city. But all these bits of Roman rain, remains are all spread around the, the Roman world. Probably one type of ruin that we don't see complete in, in a Roman context is the Roman barrack house, barrack block. It's probably the only building that we don't see anywhere that's completely contemporary. Other than that, everything's represented. And the Senate building as well. So lots of lots of bits. Now, now this itself is uh, Vincent de la Romanie in, in France. And you can see what makes up a Roman bridge. Now, what doesn't make up a Roman bridge and what makes up a Roman bridge? There, there are two principal types of Roman bridges. Let's, let's sort of leave this a minute and we'll come back to this. You have all these all these spans, all, all these butts. And this, this is the one um, here in, in Germany. And obviously you've got the single arch bridge in regards to this and semi single arch bridge. Um, and basically those are the two principal types. Just like if you go to Germany, where you would have something going over the River Tiber um, like this, where you've got these big, big sort of butts in the river, which is very similar to how they believe Pierce Bridge was constructed in the north of England. The big question is, did they just build in regards to Pierce Bridge, the, these, these big sort of bulwarks in the river and then put a timber structure above or were the ones in Britain all stone? We can't really answer that like this. So one, one little, one little story, if I, if I may slightly digress is a little story that I, I've been asked to make into a film, but unfortunately uh, I've got quite a schedule at this minute. And uh, by the way, I've been selected to do um, uh, a film, but I won't tell you more about that. Anyway, but one, 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 one story that I would like to make into a film is a story about a bridge in Italy. And I and Bill knows this story, Time and Memorial. I was sent a letter by one of the soldiers involved in regards, and this, this is a contemporary letter, all handwritten, in regards to a bridge in Italy. I'm going to say this quickly. There was a German officer and his um, adjutant going over a bridge, and he was told to lay charges to blow the bridge up, a Roman bridge in Italy. Because he was in love with Roman archaeology, um, he decided not to blow the bridge. So he, he stood on that bridge with his adjutant and there was a um, a British soldier. I, th I think the description is that he was actually in an American Jeep and he came towards the bridge and there, there was a captain and his adjutant and there was a standoff on the bridge. There was a German soldier, there was two there, Brit British captain and, and his adjutant and they were stood on the bridge. And they basically said, I'm interested in archaeology. And the other one said, I'm interested in archaeology. And, and the, the, the British captain said, well, I know that this, I wanted to come here before the Germans blew it. And the Germans said, well, I'm a German and I'm not going to blow the bridge. So the British soldier said, behind me, the reason why I'm in a Jeep is because behind me is the, um, um, a, an American mechanized division. And they want to capture this bridge and go over the, this bridge in tanks. It was a bridge like this, very much bridge like this. And we're going to go across the bridge in tanks. And the, the British soldiers said they, they, they wouldn't get over the bridge in tanks. It would destroy the bridge and we will lose this piece of archaeology. So, so, the, so the, the German officer and the British officer um, with their two adjutants um, decided that they were going to defend the bridge against the American army. And it's one of probably two instances in the Second World War where you find that the British army and the German army have a standoff against the American army um, in Italy. And it was over a bridge. So you can imagine there's these four soldiers and there's an entire 
American mechanized division come into the bridge with tanks and they have a standoff in the middle of the bridge and it's decided that the, the American army do not go over the bridge and they save the bridge. It's a Roman bridge in Italy. But you know what? For the life of me, do I know where that bridge is? I need to go back to my original notes. And when I found those original notes, I'm told that I need to copyright them because the, the notes themselves would make um, a film a film script. So back, back to, again, that's about a bridge. So back to this as well, you can, you can see that they're, that they're meant to last, but you can only have a bridge like this if, if the two, if the two um, spaniels from both sides of the canyon, in this case, are, are relatively close to each other. Um, if, if there's any, any way of more of a length than this, then you've got to um, you've got to have these big bulwarks in the water, um, as we see it so with the example of Trier and with the example that we're talking about with Pierce Bridge in northern England. Inevitably, what we do see with lots of bridges over time, and a good example of this is the is the late medieval bridge in Pregend, where you see extensive changes. What you usually find is 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 sort of the substructure below it is surviving and then uh, superstructure above is is more uh, being replaced and added to. But this is quite a good example that we actually have mainly mainly Roman work going on here. Obviously, if you if you really examined it, there would be one or two replacements of stones and of, and this above this rail above is undoubtedly Renaissance, but the rest of the structure is of that sort of Roman clientele that we may associate with this type of bridge. Naturally, bridges are the first thing to go in war because you think that, you know, um, you've got to defend a valley and there's a bridge over it, or you've got to defend a river and there's a bridge over it. The first thing that needs to go is the bridge to stop the enemy getting to you. So to have any bridges from a very ancient period of time surviving in any context is very, very rare. A bridge is over 2000 years old is, 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 is the gems. There's quite a few surviving, but when you say, when I say there's quite a few surviving, you could probably count about a hundred bridges in the Roman world when there were tens of thousands of them. So there's not many really. So you could all be bridged out on a bridge tour, but um, then again, there's not many, if you know what I mean, sort of. So th this is this is at um, the Calavant River in France, the Pont Julien, um, constructed precisely on 3 BC, 14th of October at 515. People argue over the precise moment. However, this is this is built on the Via Domitia, the 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 routeway of the Emperor Domitian. And this is in France. And you can actually see that there's probably a great deal of change with this bridge. And we can probably identify what, what is consistently definitely Roman, which it's going to be obviously these bits here. Um, are the keystones Roman? Probably not. But the shape and form tell me that we're looking at mainly Roman construction. And the one interesting thing is you, you've got you've got like the the projecting areas of these plinths here, which would make this sort of typically Roman. Obviously, the very weathered stone is the Roman. And then we see replacements, unlike the previous bridge, which is which is primarily of Roman build. And obviously uh, what what gives it away as being less Roman is this nice sort of section of architecture as you sort of see it across here which is carrying the rail i do like i do like these that's not for show that's to actually uh, give strength to the bridge and this is exactly what was being learned with the construction of the road bridge in <clears throat> pont uh, when it was called new bridge in the um late 1700s so so what 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 we what we do see is that those sort of eyes on either side are very much architectural features that are being repeated world around 
to to sort of give some stability and maybe this has suffered war and it's been damaged you know it's, it's an easier type of thing to actually see in a sense of damage to these types of monuments this is a really nice example it's the, it's the Casson bridge um, again in France and you can see what I'm talking about now this is meant to last I'm actually thinking that this this probably double up doubled up as an aqueduct as well not knowing a great deal about it but it's got that sort of aqueductal quality with it um, and interesting enough you've got these two little eyes here one there and one there and obviously even though these these are not circular that probably offset some of the the load ratio actually on the bridge and you can actually see this nice um oh god this this nice course that runs around uh, the, uh, the architectural name in my head then but it's gone um but again this is a survivor in france it's an arch and and like the like the earlier example that we see the the romani bridge uh previous to the last image we do see that there's a nice span there and the weights forced forced in to the bulwarks that actually support the bridge in the river this is obviously one little bit of a survival and when you're going through this much effort i'd probably like to again offer that it may have actually had an aqueductal quality as well again when we look at the example at pierce bridge you might be able to see the substructure there the the, the structure below is that's that's what we do survive, see surviving in one instance at pierce bridge the example that we're going to do at the end but again it, it's it's very fitting to note that the arch still survives there it's it, it's it's unaffected by it, the, the tolls and uh, tribulations of the years that's 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 really good you can see the nice keystone there <coughs> everything's really worked well there so so obviously the sense of string course, and that's what I was ex exactly looking for. And if we sort of move on a little bit further, and again, now this is this is actually in Germany, um, chair in Germany, and this itself is carrying modern traffic. Now, I'm going to say that is going to be very ob obvious knowing German Germany's history that what we do see surviving of this bridge are the the bulwarks associated the piers carrying the bridge itself so obviously this is what we're saying is actually original and what we then do see is that this this brickwork above this is obviously going to be replaced over the many years um, and again, knowing Germany's history, I would say that this brickwork is probably primarily um, prim primarily going to be medieval. And I'm not sure that this would have warranted being needing to be blown in the Second World War. But however, it's likely it would have been very much damaged in the Second World War. So we'll leave it there. So, so the, the, the idea of the carriage of this being completely in existence extant from the roman period and i do believe that the in in the roman period as well this this bridge was actually burnt as well using the word burnt so that might mean that the structure above the piers may have actually been timber or was it of of stone or brick it's we the stone or brick uh, the 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 arch in there hasn't obviously um survived from the roman period but it sort of gives you an idea of this sort of pontoon arrangement that you might see um, stretching um, the, these these great river systems in G Germany, like the Danube uh, and the Rhine, and so on. And it, it's, it's that idea of the pontoon to obviously um, uh, navigate across a river. Um, and I, I'm probably writing, saying more than anything that if if we want to look at something that's that's maybe truly of roman construction truly of roman engineering truly something that they that they gave us which is long lasting i would probably like to say it's the the bridge and aque aqueduct more than anything obviously they were aqueducts in the greek period and there have been aqueducts throughout time in history with other civilizations but 
the idea and the embodiment of the aqueduct and, and the bridge that we're looking at today is 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 a is a is a Roman um, transmission of of their sense of identity rather than anything else. And what I'm banding on about is that when we do talk about the Roman world, we talk about the Roman world taking everything from everybody and not giving anything at all. In this instance, I'm saying that they gave us the bridge. And I know that that's quite an achievement because you need to get from A to B. And it was probably the bridge that was a downfall of Rome in the first place. Oh, one of the downfalls. We talk about heading across the River Tiber to get into the, the Eternal City and all the rest of it in Rome. And we talk about crossing the Rhine and, and, and the Germanic tribes just able to go over a bridge in, in, into the Roman Empire and all, all these different ideas, bringing, bringing people in to the empire along the road, for example, along the, uh, along the bridge, along the road, the, the, the Via Appia and, and, and all these wonderful roadways that the Romans had. Um, to be able to transport armies is is aided by the uh, aiding the downfall of Rome by the Romans committing to build these things in the first place. And you can sort of get an idea, more of an idea where where the sense of Rome comes in, where you've got the sort of plinth at the base there. Um, and it, it's is that and you can clearly see that um, that that's that's mainly going to be a more more recent. Um, I'm going to change my my color there. That's going to be more recent, but you can actually get an idea that lots of these plinth bases are actually a Roman construction. And why not being that a Roman construction added to over the years? Erosion, there's going to be a great deal of erosion. But when these things are down, a lot of effort has been placed into them. And hence um, that effort itself telling you about the, the, the way the Romans uh, were given us a sense of 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 their civilization, a long-lasting sense of their civilization, and again, th this 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 is of Rome. Now, this is a rather interesting one. This this is very similar um, German example, and then a Spanish example, and this itself is is the example in Cordoba, Spain. They they I, I can't tell you what what is definitely Roman, but these these are very similar to what we do actually see um, in regards to here in Germany. Uh, this is at Cordoba in Spain. And again, the, the, the similar construction from location to location is again a hallmark of what Roman civilization was about. And obviously, Cordoba being a great um, place of Roman civilization and a great sense of medieval Christian civilization. And it plays its part in the in the Napoleonic Wars as well. So that that this being the wonderful case of what we're talking about, we, we've talked mainly about the two types of bridging that we can actually see across the Roman Empire. And again, back to that site of Pierce Bridge, which we're going to have a, a nice little look at in a few moments. I've got another example to actually come as well up of this. Now, you, you can you can sort of get an idea that that is that is old. It, it's not, you know, obviously it's been really added to, but the, the, there's a sense of age, the way that's that's constructed that you've got you've got these fairly fairly narrowly spaced arches um they're not massively spanned and again um being you know obviously you can get really fat vessels through there if the spans were a lot wider and they're not so obviously navigating with vessels down here is going to be very limited by the spans of those arches um and usually what we do see is the spans of the arches in regards to the river Thames um, and over time. Um, and if we if can you can we all bear with me a minute? I just got to I just got to get the door a minute. So if everyone could bear with me a moment. Stay there. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be back now. So we'll we'll pause the recording. Well that's good. So Dell, out, out of interest, um, have you ever seen any of these Roman bridges throughout your your wonderful colourful life? Well, possibly the Bregen one. I've been to the Ponte Vecchio. Yeah. 
we've the honeymoon was um a bus tour. Can you imagine going on a honeymoon on a bus tour? <laughs> I've got to move on from that, absolutely. Gal. You've gone into two. Oh, you... I oh. tell you what, it's absolutely fantastic. But we went down to Italy. Yeah. So, yeah, I've seen a lot of the sort of typical stuff. Yes, I've seen Roman bridges. And I did wonder about the bridge in Bridge End over the Ogmo. Yeah, but, I, but I, I said that was medieval, not Roman. Oh, yeah, we know. Oh, right, I thought you were saying it was Roman. Oh, right, Ooh, sorry. No, 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 no. But obviously... No, my, no, I know my auntie's great-grandfather's friend, what a cousin, who had an uncle with a nephew going way back, <laughs> if you know what I mean, typical Welsh... <laughs> Go on, spit it out, I've got to carry on. Yes, out build the bridge. Oh, right, okay, flip an egg, that's... Um, oh, uh, typical ass. No, no, no. Well, the thing is, the thing is, Bill's so old, his granddad actually helped yeah. build the original no. um, one Roman of the bridge things at Pierce I Bridge. Like, exactly. No, one of the things I Go on, spit like it out, go on, quick. Is bridges that go nowhere. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And roads that go nowhere, exactly. Me, yeah. me, me, me and Michelle, one, yes. If you go to the Cray Reservoir, yeah, okay, up that road and come down. Uh, if you look at the old road, there's yes. a bit of a car path. You have and to be careful because if you go there as a male on your road, you'll get followed. Oh no! But we went there as a family. Yeah. And, a picnic. and you went over the bridge. Well, part of the way. All oh, right. And Picture of it, and then from then on, I thought, Oh, I'm going to take pictures of bridges that go nowhere. Oh, god, Del, Del, on that note, I'm going to crack on. Um, Carry on, man, I, I'm going to crack on. Um, bridges, yeah, the bridges that go nowhere, yes, I, I, I know them very well. That there's a, there's a bridge up by me that goes nowhere as well, but anyway, back to what we were talking about, Cadoba, and we, we about this sense that, um. There's definitely something Roman about these structures. And look at this one here. Now that is a Roman bridge. And the reason why this has survived more than more than one, the, the one at Cadoba is that the river course has now dried up. This is the one at Salamanca. And you can get a good idea um, to the way a complete Roman spanned series of arched would be um, over a river system you can you can see that you've got these really nice triangular piers um, and then this is supporting the rest of the structure and you've got these really nice spans of arches and again the reason this has survived is for the simple note that the river system has now been diverted this this is this is the example at Salamanca. Now, if the river system hadn't been diverted, then it'd be an extensive wear on, on the pillars. Um, and it would be very likely that this would have had to have been replaced in sections quite substantially. So if you want to see if you want to see what the example of Pierce Bridge may have looked like, particularly looking, keeping your eye when we actually look at the examples at Pier, the example at Pierce Bridge, that you that you actually get these these wonderful um these wonderful plinths that that actually project into the river to sort of um, um, to have the water uh, dispersing around it to actually go through the channels in in amongst the arches themselves. Um, and again, uh, the use of sandstone, bridge architects is going to be sandstone, it's going to be limestone, sedimentary rock. But again, what we do see is a really good example of a fine survivor of a Roman bridge actually at Salamanca in Spain. And you, you can imagine that um, uh, the British soldiers would have been, been there as they besieged at Salamanca and, and obviously marched over that bridge as well. So as we start to move on, so we've got a really good example of what, what's, what's going on in that image, sort of giving us a sense of how a Roman bridge, a complete Roman bridge should look. I wouldn't say for one moment that we, we had anything like this in Roman London. Londinium. We, we believe that we've got these piers um, in in L Londinium, and then the rest of the structures, um, the arches themselves, are actually of timber. 
uh, but we do believe that under some of the bridges, um, if 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 we manage to scour the, the the bed of the River Thames because it's been extensively dredged and changed and deepened and all the rest of it, you might actually find some fragments of these piers. But th that that work is still sort of very much conjecture. But most of the rest of the structures and other than the stone piers in London would have actually been made of timber, like this example as well. This really nice reconstruction. So you're actually heading from you're actually heading from Southwark, which is a southern bank as you would cross, for example, the River Thames. So we, we, we've moved from Salamanca, uh, a dry riverbed, um, to, to London itself. Now, what, what you can see, um, giving an idea of what they are doing constructing, is what you would have is timber piers to start off with, and then what you then is back, backfill with, with stone ballast, and then face it, and, and, and so on and so on. However, the Romans were, were aware of, of, of Portland cement, um, which would be able to set under water. But we've got no real evidence to say that there was a completely stone structure. You, you can sort of see that the, that the reconstruction showing that they're, that they're, they're building um, what's going on there. Um, and they're bringing, they're bringing all the ballast in and all the rest of it to, to aid the construction here. Um, and it, it's a, the, the biggest problem with the River Thames is it's, it has been deepened. So any archaeological evidence has been since um, inevitably in most places removed. But it, is, it, there, it might be possible to find one or two examples of the piers surviving somewhere. Um, but not to my knowledge as of yet. There you can see. Um, and this this is this is a nice little plan. I, I found this on the internet. I thought, oh, that that would be nice to actually use this one. So you can you can get an idea. I think this is this is dating from about the 19, 1950s, and it sh it shows um, uh, the Walbrook, which is now an, a more or less extinct river that flows into the River Stem, Thames. It, I think it's mainly all culverted and clogged up. And you can get an idea of this strange shaped London, the the Roman Londinium. And usually what you do find is, is in the illustrations of the River Thames associated with London, you usually find more than one bridge spanning the River Thames. When I say spanning, heading across the River Thames to take more than one Roman road system. And again, there was an there was an example in time team where they where they were wishing to survey on the southern bank of the river river thames at southwark uh, where, where it's marked in they they were trying to align up more than one roman road that would have headed over the river thames um over um a, a wooden bridge um on these these stone uh, plinths and and then you've got an idea of the city and it's, it's very, very important to remember that that bridges make a city vulnerable. And having a timber bridge means that in in the later times of the four five hundreds, if you want to make the city of London defensive, you just need to remove the bridge or set light to it. And therefore, nobody can really get to you. And the River Thames was very much wider than it is today. Uh, we do know in. in we do know in the early part of the Roman world in Britain that you could wade across the River Thames, but naturally, as they're as they're deepening the River Thames and reclaiming some of the Thames side, inevitably the River Thames is getting deeper, where the River Thames now is at its narrowest. Um, and what we do think, what we do think, so if I can just sort of do a little bit of a sketch and you might grasp more to what I'm talking about. So maybe before we do know one thing that there was probably it was very unlikely that there was a, any kind of settlement at London before the Romans got here. So if, if you think about the shoreline of the River Thames, if you follow that line there, was much wider. It's probably about 43 years AD. 
And what we do see is, is that we do find descriptions of the Romans wading across the River Thames. But as the Roman period goes on, what we do see, we want to rub that out, is that the Romans are actually reclaiming and what I need is that there. The Romans are actually reclaiming and actually reclaiming more and more of this bank. And then what you do find is in the in the medieval period to find the archaeological evidence would be basically thinking that if you need to find archaeological evidence, the places that you're going to actually need to look for archaeological evidence would be here. And the reason, because that's all been backfilled, because they, they backfilled to narrow the River Thames. And that's where you're going to find the archaeology of, of that. This is where you're going to find the archaeology of these bridges. And there is that elusive idea that they're going to find evidence of the the um, uh, the piers for uh, for the bridges actually surviving more than one bridge going across the River Thames in the Roman period. And it's that sense of reclamation and what what they do find as well is when they're excavating in London, the earliest evidence of occupation in London is usually coming from these areas that have been reclaimed in the me medieval period, because what they've done is they've just backfilled in amongst the Roman keys. And that's where the archaeology is very much well preserved. So if we move on again, we are actually at Pierce Bridge. So they, they believe that this is this is associated um, with the the, the road, um, and you can really see that the the masonry there is is very very well defined. And what I'd like to do is is show you that elusive pier there. There's one, and can you see the triangle there? It's quite a chunky triangle. So we believe that that is that is as the road would have headed over um, the river that that's inevitably moved further north today. And if we if we have a little look at where Pierce Bridge is, that, that that's that's the Great River, and there's our Pierce Bridge. And in and amongst this, you've got all these remains. So we'll come back to these images. So you can see that you've got these really fine set of Roman remains, really fine set. And you've got a road going from um, uh, east to west. And the the evidence inevitably um, is that the river's actually moved further north. And if we if we go into my notes, which which I'm which I'm going to do now, and hang on a minute let's go to my notes so pierce bridge is is that elusive place in britain where people seek to find the earliest remains or some of the remains of what we do understand as a roman bridge that would have once gone over um the river now pierce bridge the the, the fort itself specifically at pierce bridge dates to the late 200s so it's not an earlier roman fort it's probably based on an earlier roman fort we've got the remains of the outlines of buildings and it would have headed across the river tees and it would be the crossing point of the very important roman road the deer street and the the fort is inevitably um most of it is under the modern day village but you can see remains of it there. The excavated Roman fort is open to the public and the remains of Pierce Bridge over the Tees now lies around 90 metres south of the current course of the river. So the river's moved further northwards. Um, and what we, what we do find is that the history is, is that the Romans built the fort here to defend the crossing. And the Roman fort known as the as the Magus Moribium, the Magus Moribium, um, or otherwise known as the um, Vinovium, which would be the fort of the wine, um, is now located under the village green, and, and, and most of it is 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 left unexcavated. So what we've what we've interestingly got 
is the remains of the Roman fort is 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 very unusual in it's in about the the two sixties two seventies that most of the masonry dates from. But we do have an earlier fort there, and this ties in with a great building period along the east coast of England in the Roman period, known as the Saxon Shore Fort coastland. And the reason why Pier Street is is of a little bit more interest to me. It was believed to have been a Roman fort that was still in commission into the 400s. So, you know, it, it's another piece of evidence of the, the fort still being commissionable into a very much later Roman period. And uh, as I've mentioned, archae the archaeological television program Time Team um, had been here in 2009. Um, I'm not exactly sure it was actually an episode as such. I think it was a one of those time team extra things that they used to do. I'm not exactly sure about that. So what I think maybe what happened is that the fort itself is is very much an important site because it's got the bridge. Was it all a stone bridge? We don't know. St definitely a stone substructure. And and then we we it was a very important crossing point. Um, and it's, it might be that you've got the, the people surviving as part of the garrison here. And that's obviously going to be as a distraction to people actually coming down from the north. So it's, there was a major battle here, the Battle of Catrith. And the Battle of Catrith, if I get the date on that, there was a major battle there in about the 600s. And it was... They were they were attracted by the fact that you you get um, south of the Tees via going over this bridge. So it was an more important crossing point from an earlier time into that later period that we're actually talking about. So if we if we have a a, a little look at some of these images, and we we, we see the fort, and interesting in me enough, the the crossing point from here is not exactly where it is today it's it's it, in my notes it describes hang on if we get to my notes so hang on let's let's get my 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 locational stuff um in here and the the, the crossing point is 450 meters uh, away from where modern day where the fort is today so the, the crossing point is not exactly by the fort um, and that's the archaeological evidence so if, we, if we, we have a little look at some of the images so we've got the fort itself and we've got that there and look at that there this this is this is all associated with with the bridge and you can see that they they actually meant business i actually tried to find a plan of this today and i couldn't actually put it all together it's one of those weird types of sites that, that you need to that you need to try and work with. So that that there is actually the other side of where is it? That right. So if we go there, we, we turn this around the other way, and then we see this from another angle, and you can actually see how substantial this masonry is. And this this was very much meant to last, but obviously with the movement of the river. 90 meters further north instead of the river moving 90 meters further south this is why this has survived now it's no longer a hazard in the river, river system you can imagine that over time people have wished to make river systems a lot lot deeper so therefore if there's any masonry hidden in the river it's going to be removed and do you know one thing that i didn't to do today and i think i've got a little bit of time I might type in Time Team Pierce Bridge 2009, um, and that would give us a little bit more of a final taster to doing this uh, bridge stuff today. So, so what we've got there, there, there it is. So if we if we see that, and you can see where you've got the Roman fort, and you've got the remains of the Roman bridge, and the remains of the Roman bridge are actually on the opposite side of the River Tees. So if we sort of reorientate this the other way around, and there it is. 
you, you can you can see you can see what's going on there so this is this is the um site that we've been looking at um and there's the remains of the roman bridge and the the river system obviously um hang on hang on i've got this the other i got this the wrong way around haven't i i shouldn't have moved that map okay right you can yes so that's right so you've got only part of the roman fort still visible at this minute only part of it so that's the bit that we've been looking at there um, and you've got the bits of the roman bridge that was actually surviving somewhere separate and i think it's rather interesting that you've got the roman alignment of the road the deer street moving away from the fort so the deer street doesn't go through the fort it's actually away from the fort which is rather interesting because in regards to most roman forts what you would see is you'd, you'd have the road going through it and then you'd have you'd have that then leading onto the bridge but the deer street is actually separate from the fort and i, and I think that's a really interesting aspect it means that you're not going to have all strange people wandering through the fort and again again that that again gives you a good impression of these huge blocks that we used so what i'd like to do now is i'd like to use what's left of of, of the time today i'm going to type in to my computer i'm going to type in um i'm going to type in pierce bridge um pierce bridge and i'm going to see time team I'm going to see if we can get something on that. See if we can get some images. Um, let's see if we can get some images on this. Da, 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 da. I, uh, da, 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 da. I do believe we've got... There are some images on here, but not many. Hang on a minute. All I can remember, when they, were, when they, when they had the Time Team episode... I think you might be some some of you might be familiar with these images. Hang on. Let's just um let, let's let's share my screen a minute. And hang on. I'm having a blonde moment. Right, new share. Right, there you go. I, I can remember this episode quite well because they, they were actually diving, they had divers in there um and you know you know we were yes we we were we were looking at the image earlier on and i turned it around i was right in the first place because um you can actually see you can actually see the bridge there towards the east um and or was that the other way around there's there anyway there's the reconstruction there of the bridge and it is naturally far away from the fort and if I if I can if I can remember again, they they've obviously done this survey, and they they had people diving and then they were actually finding lots of stakes if I can remember right. And they they under they undertook to do more trial trenching in the field. And they were looking to, they I I can remember this as well. They they were they were um if i can get my gray cells out that there is the piece of masonry that we've seen and then what they were doing they were trying to line up these piers and at the same time they were diving in the river to actually see if they could actually find more sections of the road uh, and it was a bit vague, but I, oh yeah, there is something else that I can remember quite clearly, that they had a metal detective uh, enthusiast on hand, and they were using uh, metal detectors under the water, and they're coming up with lots of artifacts, like lots of coins, then lots of um, brooches and so on. So if I can remember that from the episode, that's exactly what they were coming up with. So the, the Time Team episode, episode was quite successful. They come across more metal artifacts than sort of masonry and timber. So on that note, we'll, what we'll do, we'll call that a day. And are there any questions, folks? You first, Del. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, because I've got to move soon. Because we've got builders in, building a new shed. 
or a man cave where I can put my archaeology stuff. There is one thing about your man cave, Dal. Will you be telling us all about it tomorrow? Probably. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. I'm, I'm glad you are. I'm, gl I'm glad you are. Yes. I won't tell you what I do in there. All right, then. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, Richard, <laughs> Richard wants to take his artifacts because, there as well. No, because Anne will be on tomorrow. And she's been in contact with me this week oh. about other stuff. Ah, right. Cool. Yes. Cool. Anyway. Okay, Del, tell us all about it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, with this, um, the fort. Yeah. You know, it's obviously been built for a reason. And we know what rivers are like. They shift and change or whatever. But because I've got my own slant on Latin, I pronounce it in the old non-Latin way, if you know what I mean. Yes. So the Kivitatus, if you know what I mean. Kivitatus. Kivus. Yes. Yes. The Kivus. The Kivus. Yes. Obviously, the locals might not have wanted it to be within the fort, but by then everything was absolutely lovely, peaceful. It was basically, <laughs> yeah. it was basically, oh, that's the police station, that's the courts, that's the thingy what's it of town. So we'll so, have the bridge somewhere else? Oh, we'll ship the bridge, yeah. No, well, but the bridge went because the river moved. Oh, yes. I wonder if so obviously continually moving where the location of the bridge is. And I think this is what they yeah, may have come across with time team. Yes, yeah. would have moved. And yes. even, even before that, why would locals want to put their sort of centres in Roman Fort if all it was was the courts? And, and the, other, the other thing as well is it, the, the local people would be responsible for maintaining the bridges anyway after a military control well, yes. moved elsewhere. Yes. Exactly. And if I exactly. had a piece of land on a river, I would say, oh, look at that. You build, your, you build your own bridge. You'd build, yeah, exactly. I agree. I, I agree. this one, I'm getting money. I'm going to pay for people to cross. They're not all necessarily going to be military as well. That, that, no, that, no, that, no, that, no. That, that's, one, that's one of the yeah. things I would say. Exactly. Yeah. A, a exactly. growth per cow. Exactly. A growth oh. Um, half a groat per turkey. We'll leave him out of that one. Um, <laughs> okay, then. Thanks for that, Thanks. Oh, Carl, i got to go because we've got people coming in sorting out our new shed. Okay, and, and Bill, Bill wants to be down there as well. See you, Dale. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Dale. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Oh, no Pat. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello, Pat. So long. <laughs> so long, Dale. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, Dale. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you, Dale. And uh, Bill, what about you? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the reason why we haven't got evidence of any Roman bridges left in the UK. Um, what Erosion, I'm, what I'm coming up with is that the design of the bridge. Although from a load point of view, it would be quite substantial to accommodate developing road transport from cars to lodges, et cetera. Basically, they were compatible enough to cater for um, the growing um, rolling loads of, of carts and everything else, you know. By that, I mean, I think most of them are quite narrow. Like like the small pack bridges, yeah. yeah, me, yeah. Me, me and Michelle, yeah, me and Michelle were, took, yeah. So and, and and any designer would come and say, yeah, that's lovely, you know, but it's, it's just not practical for what we want to, to, what we intend for through to use it. So get rid of it, use it somewhere else. You know, it's ballast, you know, and construct a new bridge. So I think that may be a factor as to why we don't see it in many bridges anymore. It just weren't compatible for, for the modern development of, uh, of transport, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and uh, there, was, there was a program on a few years back, it might be time team, where they actually found uh, Below uh, water level in London, the, um, the one of the original uh, bridges crossing the Thames. We found something down there, you know, 
Uh, I can't remember. Was it a jetty or something? Remains of stumps of jetties or something like that associated with the uh, crossings over the uh, Thames during Roman times? You know? Well, actually, you talk about bridges. You know, the new bridge in pont de which was built in, yeah, um, yeah, which was yeah. opened in 1756. That was the same problem, Bill. It was too narrow. Yeah. Too narrow, quite right, yeah. So that's one reason why they just left out there and went to one side of it and built a modern bridge. Well, oh, that's an interesting one that they actually left it there and built the modern bridge. Yeah, well, exactly. That, that shows them they cared about conservation in those days. Exactly. Well, somebody, somebody did, which wasn't generally the case, was it? No, exactly. Well, I, I just think they couldn't be asked, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't yeah. be asked. And and right, right. Um, Richard Babes. <clears throat> yeah, really interesting. Um, just makes you wonder, mind. Um, you know, a lot of these bridges could have been destroyed uh sort of um sort of saxon sort of um you know vikings and possibly the anglo-saxons destroyed them to try and stop the uh, vikings advancing mm. oh yeah yeah it's, it's, it's obviously uh, and, and that actually a good example of that and, and um, one one thing I was getting mixed up with in in that is that the fort was actually on the northern bank, um, and that remains were on the southern bank uh, of the bridge. So I, I I made I got that the wrong way round in the lecture then. So I wanted to correct that. But the the one the one thing I wanted to mention as well is that um, the good point that Richard just made the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Where now, we were where, where we were last Saturday. Yeah, the the bat the battle of the Stamford Bridge, the Battle of Stamford Bridge, and um, it's um, yes, because it's so close, Bill. The Battle of Stamford Bridge in in uh, 1066 on the um, um, on uh, let me get the the 21st of uh, September 1066 on the 24th. Um, that that was that was over a bridge, and. If you get rid of the bridges, then you don't have battles. And the the bridge at Stamford was actually made of wood, because the story has it is that um, the um, I think I think one of the leaders marching across the bridge he got stabbed from under the bridge because it was made of wood. So if you get rid of the bridges, then you don't don't get rid. This is a thing you see, Bill. If we blow up the two seven bridges, we won't have any problems with England anymore. And he won't come over here. It'll be our country again. <laughs> yes. Just so, uh, so the bridge, the bridge itself is 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 a very interesting p sense of control or power. You get rid of the bridge, and then, yeah, things move. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. That's why that's why they ain't here. And the other point, if we do that with bridges, it's the same with gateways. Most of the Roman gateways in Britain that were still standing. Were still standing in the 1750s when they widened the roads in Britain. Most of of the Roman gateways went. Yeah. It's the same with bridges. It's all about uh, all to do with transport development, all the same. Exactly. Yeah. So the gateways go in towns and cities if they're still standing Roman ones in um, the the the, the uh, 1750s. By the 1800s, they're mainly gone. And it's the same with bridges. If there were any stone bridges, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bingo. Any, any bingo anything you'd like to say pat um just that i have been to salamanca and i did see that bridge and it is amazing it's just just like that when i saw that picture i thought i've been there yeah it brings time. back memories did you have a picnic yeah. under the bridge uh, well we walked around there and they, they did have a little animal like um it wasn't a, it was a statue and it was like a pig but bigger sort of and they used to use those as markers for their their property they explained oh weird so uh yeah it was it was um but it was taller than a pig you know it was about four feet high and four legs and and a little stumpy head you know and um they found it in some field and the only thing they could say was that this is um a marker you know someone had it carved and then set it on their land and then people would know this is their land it was right near that bridge. Oh wow! Yeah, strange. That is strange. strange. Yeah, that that is uh, that is strange. That is strange. Um, okay. On that note. Um. Anyway, thanks for that. Somebody's been to the bridge at Salamanca. That's fascinating. Mm. 
pigs as marker stones. Roman, in the Roman period you're talking about. I suppose, yeah. Oh, guys, oh, chuck it in there. Yeah. Why not? Um, no, that's, that's yeah. brilliant. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you for that. Yeah. So if, it's if, quite tall. It's four feet tall. It's not like a little pig. It's <laughs> it's some other creature. <laughs> All right, then. It's not a it's not a pig, then. It's like a pig. So, <laughs> so what I'd like to do is ask you guys, right? Um, Bill, don't say the the thing, right? Because your your Roman classes, um, like everybody else, the the last Roman class, right, is scheduled for next week. Right, that's the last one. Right, so what I need to know is, are you happy with me continuing to do another eight? And it's up to you. Yes, I am. But Shut again, up, Bill. I know what you're going to say. Okay, well, well, give me an answer. Right, well, I'll, I'll give you my answer, and you can comment on it. Yeah, but Bill, Bill, I, I've um, I've said that your Roman stuff was current, right? So that's fine. Um, so I, I'm still trying to work out the other stuff. I do have an answer with the other one, but it's okay. it's. All right. it, it's um as long as you it. anyway the main thing is every the last roman one runs out next week okay. right so, so what so, hang on hang on so the week after that so where are we now it's sort of seventh ninth so the 16th is the start of the new cycle that's right right okay that's what i want for the other two so what what what, what i want what i want to say is that um i don't want to do it next week but you know what I want to do? I want to I want to do something completely different. I want to do uh, I want to do Spartacus and the Roman Revolt. That's fine. Yeah. I, I want to do Verting Geterix. Yeah. We will do Verting Geterix. You can see the theme, can't you? Because it's about war. Yeah. yeah. Spartacus, Verting Geterix, and then what I want to do is um, I want to do uh, Varus. So we'll do a bit of Varus. So that'll be three, and then we'll do another whatever. So most people, when you look at Rome, and when we do Spartacus, we can look at why the revolt occurred, and then, um, but we won't do that next week. Next week we'll do something else, and then then those will be the next batch. So that, that's fine. Carl, one thing to keep in mind: as the summer develops now, and hopefully lockdown leaves more and more, there may be the odd Wednesday when I and others would we want to do something else, holiday-wise. So. There's a good chance we're not going to meet and be there for everyone, every talk, that's all. Right. And then the other thing is, um, do you want me to do a write up on York for the next newsletter? Oh, oh, oh fuck. But the reason why I say it like that is because um, Rosamond wants to do one, um, um, Jessica's doing one. Um, but <laughs> what I'm going to say, Jessica told me to be aware that you were doing one, right? So I oh. think. If you were going to be doing a write-up, you need to be doing something completely different from what Jessica's doing. So I think, I what, what do you want to do? What do you want to do the write-up on? Because it would be nice to have some other a general one and not much history. Well, I tell you oh, what, uh, a general general one. That's it. We'll I, do that. Go for I've it. Send, I'll send it to you, and you can decide what to do with it. Put it in. Put in a bin or whatever. Okay. No, it won't go in a bin. No, so if you're going to do it, you may as well do it. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll do it and send it to you, and you can decide what to do with it. You might find us better than the other two. You don't know. Oh, <laughs> Bill, stop it! <laughs> that's really, that's really bad. That is, it's really, really bad. No, I don't know the quality of the other two writing. <laughs> oh God! Oh, for a minute. All right, we'll leave that one. Okay. On that note, if Bill, you, Bill, uh, Richard, and Pat, you haven't got any more questions, I will, I will see you. Well, I'll, I'll see, I'll see. Oh, what's his face, Richard, on Friday, Friday. get the date right, uh, and I'll see um, Pat and Bill tomorrow, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, oh, thank, you, Carl. Awesome. thank you very much, okay. Bill and Richard and Pat, we'll see you soon. Oh, bye now. Get healthy, I, take yeah, care of yourself. I, I will try, I will try, Rich, Richard's there, that, thanks for that, Pat. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, I, I, got, have you I got some special quarterly. tablets coming, and I haven't arrived yet. Oh. Not not oh. dodgy tablets. I I I I was I was surviving on those bloody high dose vitamin um um Vizzy tablets, and I just I'm still waiting for them to come through. So, well, hope you get your old mojo back. <laughs> oh. So long, man. <laughs> oh.
Yeah. I'll see you soon, Pat. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Bye. Thanks for that. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Carl, what was I going to say? You're still there, Carl. Yeah, I'm not still here. No, it's oh, Dave. Oh, right. No, it's only there's some guy has appeared on Facebook. And apparently he worked on Atlantic Trading Estate. Ah, right. What's his name? Patrick James Kearney. Right, what's he saying? Kearney? Oh, I don't know. I think he's moved away or something and he's come back to Barry or... What, what, so what does he want? What does he... Oh, no, he was trying to get in touch with people who were keen on the dig at the Atlantic Trading Estate. Oh, right. You can say that I've been on the uh, excavation at Atlantic Trading Estate. Uh, Manpower State. Services or something? Yeah, well, I was a volunteer. I wasn't with the manpowers. Yeah, but yeah, uh, tell him to get in touch. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he, no manpowers, good. yes. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about doing an Atlantic Trading Estate walk. Yeah. Which, which, which could be doable. Yeah, sort of I'll have a look and... Uh, okay. Right. Okay, don't then. Oh, I sent you that. An email as well with the ah the the um Abby come here yeah for the newsletter that's going in ah oh, lots happening anyway Richard yeah. anyway thanks for that I will see you Friday thanks for doing the Abby come here thing that will definitely be going in unlike Bill talking about the other thing that we're with that they can either go in or not yeah as long as it's not to do with York I don't mind uh, Richard yeah. <laughs> Oh, and also, can I ask you, do you want to do the next bloody photographs for this article in the in the Barron District? Because I managed to do, um, I ended up doing Sycamore Cross. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that you put on. I sent you the email, didn't I? I ended yeah. up doing Sycamore Cross, but I, I just thought that was a bit of a cop out because I did highlight the week before. And now I've done another one on North of Barry, right? Yeah. I, I need to... Um, I want to get back to Caniston, but I, I haven't done much on Barry Island at all. I've done nothing on Holton, but there's nothing on Holton anyway. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we'll see how it goes. There, you can't really, you know, put a photo in, can you? Yeah, Barry's got to be the one of the only yeah. places in Britain that's hardly got anything. Yeah. Anyway, all right then. Well, I'll um. Well, I, I will I will definitely um there, there is that lane, you know, before you get to Daniel Street off the off um Barry Road. Yeah, you go no. down Barry Road and and just before you get to the um the Tesco's, or what was it called? The fucking Oh well, yeah, yeah, Robin's Lane. Yeah, Robin's Lane. That's that's yeah. a, I like Robin's Lane. I'm I might I might um that that would be something. Yeah, yeah. there's some odd little sort of Bits around there, aren't there? Yeah, there is. Funny little walls and bits yeah. sticking out and Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Robin's Lane. Yeah. He's got the cottage on the side. Yeah, there's some strange sort of, you know. Strange sort of landscape. It, it, yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anyway, anyway, Richard, I'm going to dash. Yeah, all right, Carl. So if you haven't got anything else, I'll see you Friday, and Jessica will have you tonight, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, then, Richard. Okie dokie. All I'll right, then. Speak to you Friday. Speak to you Friday, then. Yeah, I might have some more, then, on sort of big lists and sheep in mills and all that. I, I, I actually put, I actually, I actually opened the book the other day and wrote something in it. Oh. So I was dead impressed yesterday. Anyway, I'll, I'll speak to you. I'll see you then on Friday. Yeah, all right, Carl. Take care, Richard. All right, cheers, Carl. If there's nothing else, I'll see you then. Yeah, that's it. See you then. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye.